Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the T-Motor Tron 80, a very fun to fly whoop style micro quadcopter which is equipped with the Cadix Nebula Nano digital transmission system. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up and share with you my custom settings which in my opinion made it fly better, give you my feedback after testing it out and of course show you some flat footage. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside the box along with the quadcopter you are getting a spare set of Gemfen 1636 four bladed propellers in addition to the ones which are pre-assembled on the motors, a total of three Timoto branded battery velcro straps, the original antenna of the Cadex Vista system and the four pins JST connector which I've already used that will enable you to easily connect an external radio receiver to the flight controller. As for its specs, the Timotor Tron 80 is a pusher style micro quadcopter. It features the latest version of the Timotor 1103 8000 kV motors, which can handle up to 3S batteries when pushing 40mm propellers. On the center of the quadcopter, you can find a 25.5 by 25.5mm F4 all in one flight controller that features an integrated 13A BLLES 4 in 1 ESC, LED units which are located on its sides. A USB Type-C connector which is conveniently located on the top side of the flight controller and JST connectors for easily connecting an external radio receiver and the Cadex Vista unit which is located underneath the flight controller. The battery is mounted on the top side of the frame and it is using an XT30 battery connector. In order to reduce some weight, instead of using the original Cadex Vista antenna, it is using a lighter linear antenna. The Nebula Nano camera unit is well protected by the frame. The wheelbase of the frame is 80mm and it features a true X pattern. The thickness of the top carbon fiber plate is 1.2mm and the frame is made out of a high quality durable plastic material. In addition, the weight of the Tron 80 without an external radio receiver is 72.1 grams. Including a Crossfire Nano receiver, it weighs 73.4 grams. Including a 3S 300 mAh LHB battery, it weighs 101.3 grams. And including a 3S 450 mAh LiPo battery, which is the one that I recommend to use, the total weight is 114 grams. You should note that according to Timotor, the Tron 80 is capable of carrying an action camera, and they provide you with STL files that will enable you to 3D print by yourself mounts for the SMO 4K and the Insta360 Go 2 cameras. The weight of the Tron 80, including the SMO 4K camera and its mount, is 110.8 grams, and I plan to test this setup on an upcoming video. As for setting up the Tron 80, first of all, in case you are not going to use the DJI Radio Controller, you will need to disconnect the Signal SBUS wire that connects the Cadex Vista and the flight controller, and then install an external radio receiver, either by plugging it directly to the JST connector of the flight controller, or by soldering it to the UR2 pads. Under the port section of Betaflight, as you can see, the serial rig switch is already enabled on UR2, which is going to be connected either to your external receiver or to the built-in receiver of the Cadix Vista. The configuration slash MSP switch is enabled on UR1 in order to display all the OSD data on the HD feed. Under the configuration tab, you should note that the motor direction is reversed and you need to pay attention to it when installing the propellers. Out of the box, the EC slash motor protocol was set to DSHOT 600. However, in order to improve the performance of the Tron 80 and extend its flight time, after following the excellent whoop tuning guide by TMAC, which is linked down below, I changed it to DSHOT 300 and after flashing the ESCs with Jazz Maverick firmware, I enabled the bidirectional dish switch and set the motor pulse value to 12. In addition, I also updated the PID profile and filter settings, and in case you would like to try out these custom settings, which again, in my opinion, made the Tron 80 fly better, you can find a link to the custom dump file down below. The next thing that you need to do is to make sure that all the sticks and switches are working properly after binding the radio receiver with your radio controller, and then define your favorite flight modes and OSD elements. Overall, after testing the Timotor Tron 80, I can tell you that in my opinion, it's a very fun to fly and resilient micro quadcopter. Currently, at the moment of shooting this video, there aren't many binary fly options in this category for the DJI Digital FPV system, 
The biggest competitor of this quadcopter is the Gepro C Thinking P16, which I have previously reviewed, and in case I had to pick one of them, I would probably go with the Tron 80, since the pusher style configuration seems to perform better, I prefer the top mounting option of the battery, and the Tron 80 seems to be more durable. In addition, it's worth mentioning that I really like the top USB Type-C connector, and I hope that other manufacturers are going to use it as well. As for flight time, you can expect between 2 to 4.5 minutes using a 450mAh 3S like a battery, which is in my opinion the recommended one to use, as it will provide you with the best balance of performance and flight time. In case you would like the Tron 80 to be a little bit more agile, you can also use a 300mAh 3S LHB battery, but then of course your flight time is going to be reduced. I also tested the Tron 80 using a 2S battery, however I don't recommend it, because it is just going to be underpowered, so in case you would like to fly it indoors and you think that 3S is just too much for you, I recommend to limit the motor's output using Betaflight. As for its downsides, first of all, the biggest issue that you are going to notice in the flight footage is that the Tron 80 suffers from a lot of jello, especially during daytime. In my opinion, it's a result of the combination of the plastic frame and the fact that it's using the Nebula Nano, which is more prone to jello. The second issue is that the Tron 80 is not very external ready receiver friendly, and even though the flight controller supports it, you will find that it's not going to be very comfortable to mount the ready receiver and its antennas. In addition, when mounting the battery, you need to make sure that it is going to be properly secured in its position, as in case it is going to move around, it's going to damage the flight performance, and securing it in its position using this type of battery velcro straps can be a little bit cumbersome. Finally, I think that it could have been better if the Vista unit would have been properly protected, maybe using a transparent plastic sheet. And by the way, you need to make sure every, let's say, 5 or 6 flight that the screws of the Vista system are properly secured, as I have already lost two of them due to the vibrations. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video, which is still not 100% complete, as I still need to test the Tron 80 with an SMO 4K camera. Hopefully, it's going to happen soon, so stay tuned for the upcoming video. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.